And I came up with five. And what are the five? The first one is hard work. I'm sure we all agree that hard work is an element of success, right? Hello? Amen. The second one is prayer. Maybe you should, you should repeat them after me to be sure that you are fully engaged. The first one is what? Second is prayer. Third one is obedience. Obedience. And the fourth one is attitude. Somebody say attitude. 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 Somebody say attitude. And the fifth one is diligence. Diligence. Okay, so those are the five. I'm sure there are many others, but those are the five I was able to come up with this morning. And then the Lord told me to score them. I remember that I have done this exercise before a long time ago. That was why it was easy for a thing to come out again in my heart. So I listed A, B, C, D, E to Z and decided to give each alphabet grading of scores. So A was 1, B, 2, C, 3, D, 4, right down to Z, that's 26. I now went on to ascribe each score to the letters that we have in each word. So for, for hard work, H was H, A was 1, R 18, and the total score for hard work is 98. Pass mark. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Then I look at prayer. I scored prayer accordingly. Prayer came up with 83%. And I look at obedience. Obedience came up with 62%. And I look at um, diligence. Diligence came up with 67%. And I look at attitude. Attitude came up with 100%. 100%. So which means of all these uh, elements of success we talk about from the perspective of that particular grade, attitude came out tops. It's 100%, followed by hard work, 90%, and etc., etc., etc. So this morning, I'm led to share a discourse on attitude. And I want you engaged. What is attitude? Who can describe, who can define for me what attitude is? Anybody? I come to you. Anybody? Anybody went to college want to tell us about attitude? Yes, ma'am. Whatever you are doing. Yeah. I mean the word disposition. Towards whatever. Disposition. Yes. Mommy says attitude means disposition to whatever you are doing, to whatever, to a situation, also to people. To events, to employment, etc. Give them the clap of it. Any other definition? Any other definition? Nobody went to college this block. You're a teacher. Uh, I was about to say what she says. Oh. <laughs> she was about to say what she says. Yes, I think, yes, sir. Somebody put up his hand there. The attitude. Attitude is about your mannerisms and your reaction to issues generally. Somebody is here. Mannerism and reactions. Amen. Attitude will be your mindset. Attitude is your mindset. Amen. Sister Viola. Your feeling towards something and the way your body language. Your feeling towards something and the way your body language communicates. Somebody at the back, quickly, quickly, just one word, attitude, definition. Psychological constructs. Psychological constructs. That inheres a person. That's what? Inheres a person. That describes a person. That describes a person. Give, give Lori Clap of it. Yeah, those are wonderful. 
wonderful definitions of um, attitude. Amen. We can just add one or two more. Uh, you can add that is a tendency or the irritation of the mind, the mind in particular. And then also, like somebody mentioned, is a position or posture of the body language, your body language. You know, some people you are talking to them, they send you feedback without they are saying a single word. And you know that they are probably not going to agree with what you are, we are doing. So this morning I want to talk briefly on what we call positive attitude. Positive attitude. And I want you to either write it down or, or record it in your, in your phone because um, I learned a lot when I got all this revelation. Amen. Positive attitude is a habit for me. It's a habit for me. And it has an impact on you and on the people around you. A person with a positive attitude will almost always outperform a person with negative attitude. So if you are in the committee or you are in a team, even your place of work, those who have positive attitude will always outperform those who have negative attitude, as you can see later. Positive attitude shapes your happiness and gives direction to your success in life. You know, many people claim to believe and attitudes that make them losers. They always believe negatively, oh, it cannot work, it cannot work, or oh, I can't do it. Or because I'm black and I'm, and, 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 and I'm in America, there's a limit to my level of achievement. That's not true. We've seen so many black people achieve excellence at every front, virtually in every aspect of life. So the fact that you are black does not mean that um, you cannot achieve the best. We have seen people who have forever looking for excuse to say that, well, it's because I don't have papers. In fact, many people have over glorified papers over and above God. I ran to somebody in the United Kingdom three weeks ago that was in London and uh, he's so successful and we're talking and uh, I asked about his wife. He said, Pastor, you need to pray for me. I've been looking for a way by which my wife can come into the UK for the past 15 years. I said, fight for him, fight for her. Now, why do you fight for her? He smiled. He said, Pastor, I've been here for the past 26 years. I have no papers. But come and see the business that he's doing. The business that he's running. Very successful. So the fact that you have no papers does not mean that you can still not be happy. Amen. It does not mean that you can still not possess the land. Because the Bible tells me that every grand I step upon, I will possess. Amen. 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 That should always be your attitude at all times. Now your attitude is a great thing that only you can control. Your pastor cannot control your attitude. Your parents cannot control your attitude. Your husband or your wife, your children cannot control your attitude. But you alone have the ability to control your attitude. You are the only one who can drive yourself positively from the inside. Williams James, a Harvard psychologist, says something that's very profound. And I quote Babati. So the greatest discovery of my generation is that a human being can alter his life by altering his attitudes of mind. I say that again. <laughs> the greatest discovery of my generation is that a human being can alter his life by altering his attitudes of mind. So, brothers and sisters, I want to let you know that developing and sustaining a positive attitude requires a disciplined skill that you must practice regularly. Is a skill that you have to develop and practice regularly. 
Proverbs 17, 22. Proverbs 17, 22. It says, A merry heart does good like medicine, or the broken spirit dries the bones. When the bones are dried up, the person will suffer what we call a structural failure. The body will just collapse. And that's it. I pray in the name of Jesus that your bones will not dry up. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Let me go on now and talk about truths about attitude. Some truths about attitude. Number one, it is the way you look at life. That's what Mama said when she gave us that definition. Attitude is the way you look at life. It is also the way you choose to respond to events or to situations, etc. It's your choice. The way you choose to respond to events. For the past four or five seasons, Lakers have been non performers. But I remain a committed fan of Lakers. I didn't give up on them. If I, I look for excuses for them. <laughs> Last year, when, when, he didn't, when, he, when he did not make the playoff, I said, oh, it's all right. They won about 15 trophies in the past. I mean, how many, how many teams have won that number? Maybe only uh, Boston, Celtics. All right? Only Celtics. So, Canada won for the first time in their life. <coughs> they will not let us rest. <laughs> We see whether they are actual champions <laughs> this season when their star had come to Los Angeles. So whichever way we look at it, we have a very high chance of winning the championship this year. Other Lakers or Clippers. So my my expectation, my high hope about Lakers is paid off doubly now at that Clippers or Lakers. A junior friend of mine took me to watch one of Lakers' games last year. We paid two hundred thirty-seven or two hundred fifty-seven dollars. I for forgotten to have good seats. Guess what? Lakers lost. <laughs> he paid for the ticket. <laughs> it was very mad. He was agitated. It's like the loss of that game spoiled the entire day. I said, "But take it easy." Because if they want, they will not give you a dollar. So what's your problem? <laughs> I console myself by saying, don't worry, it's good that they lost. Because then they will know how to recoup, how to regard that, how to bring more people, better people. And that was going on uh, uh, now. I'm making reference to this to let you know that there's nothing is too serious in this world. Nothing. However terrible it may look, for as long as a child of God, and for as long as you know that the joy instead of you is, is powered from the inside by the Holy Ghost, nothing. After nothing. Your attitude is not something that happens to you, <laughs> your attitude is created by your thoughts, your thinking. And guess what? You are the one who chooses your thoughts. You are the one who chooses the direction of your thinking. And I discovered that characteristics of successful people include ability to maintain a positive and proactive attitude. A positive and proactive attitude. You just see some people. You keep on wondering what's going on for these people. They are always happy. They are always proactive. And I think I read something which I'm sure some of you have read before. It says, give the world a smile. And the world will smile back at you. Give only one smile. I've tried before. If I look at this person, smile. The person smiles back. Look at him, smile. Only one smile. 
and then you receive a of smile. But frown at the world, the world will frown back at you. <laughs> and it will appear as if the entire world is against you. Let me mention something quickly about negative attitude. Proverbs 51. Proverbs 51. It says, A soft wrath, a soft answer turns away wrath. But grievous words stir up anger. A soft word turns away wrath. But grievous words, bitter words, they stir up anger. As I grow up, to matured age of maturity, I begin to gain some wisdom that teaches me that when I'm in contention with somebody and we are still our cases, I do not use accusatory languages. I do not say, You, this is what you did, this is what you said, this instead, use this is what happened, this is what I perceive, this is what I think you are saying. Not you, you, you. Because the moment you begin to do that, that person is preparing his or her defense. And it's going to make his or her defense much more accusatory than your own. It's so simple, guys. Negative attitude is a product of negative thinking. Negative thinking. I don't know why I've told you this before. A long time ago, when I used to have some serious inverted complex, when I used to look for approval from people about my dressing, a long time ago, somebody taught me a lesson I would never, never forget. I show up one day in a nice, what I consider a nice dress combination. And the person looked at me and said, Ah! ah! <laughs> No look at what you are wearing. I feel bad. That spoiled my phone that day. And everybody look at me. I thought they were looking at my dress combination. Later on, a few weeks later, when I was going to go out, I, I remember what that guy said and tried to make my combination better. And I packaged myself along this line of criticisms. Guess what? It was the first person I saw again at that point. Uh uh. Because you said red, she that you are not putting yellow on. Boy, I'm sorry for you. <laughs> I didn't like it. Again, my confidence between you. So the next time I was going to go out, at that time, I had to bring about three or four dresses. I don't know which one I'm wearing now. I don't. Anyway, when I if eventually selected one, I was praying that I hope that man does not come. <laughs> I hope he doesn't come. Guess what? He <laughs> came. <laughs> he said, you know what, boy? I knew you would make your good dress in the army. He's made up his mind that no matter what I wore. After some time, just said, that you look safe. So I changed my statics. Next time I went out, I went out to address to please myself. And when I saw him, before he said anything about my dress, I spoke about his dress. He said, look at you, as you're correcting me. Look, look at, look at you. You know what? His commission was good. But I criticized it. He said, look at what you're wearing. Horrible. She was shame for herself. So, before you could gather himself together, me and I escaped with my business. <laughs> you know, negative attitude affects you physically. Physically, I you may not know. You see some people walking like crap, it's because they're angry. They want, don't want to look at the proper direction. Physically. So it is possible for you to achieve permanent physical deformity because of negative attitude. One other thing I need to mention to Ross is that attitude, negative attitude, 
will make you commit sin without your knowing. Negative attitude will make you commit sin because you will never see anything good in somebody else. There was a time when I became a junior minister, I thought I knew it all because I could debate. Because for years I've been debating for my college, I assume I could preach the best of sermons. So there are times when I go to church and I sit down, like some of you are sitting down, I'm busy analyzing and judging the sermon of that man or that pastor. And sometimes I criticize his elocution, his grammar, and everything. By so doing, I missed a lot of the blessings that the guy was trying to pass across. And I come empty and I live empty until the Lord delivered me. There are many of us, there are many of us this morning that the Lord will deliver Amen. in the name of Jesus. Mind what I said. I said, there are many of us that God will deliver. That's the language of communication. And I'm sure that you guys will find that to there are many of you that the Lord will deliver. That's not a good enough language. But there are many of us that the Lord will deliver. As a part of attitude, your disposition towards attitude, to let you know that you are not in a position to keep on judging other people negatively. Amen. Pray with God. Amen. Let me mention steps to have positive or proactive attitude, and we will conclude. We take our Holy Communion, and then we do our Thanksgiving. The first one is that you must be disciplined and selfless about the way you see, the way you think. And the way you make judgments about events, situations, people, and yourself. Why is Pastor Nero not preaching a regular sermon this morning? Because this kind of message helps a lot. Because sometimes when we preach a regular sermon, it's like we over spiritualize the message that we want to take home. So you need to develop a positive attitude of selflessness that is also disciplined for you to have a positive or proactive attitude. Then you must consciously and proactively manage the way you process events and actions. We, compulsively, must consciously and proactively manage the way you process events and actions. You know, in the middle of the night when I woke up and I look at what's up, I saw my friend, my brother, Papa. Everybody say Papa. Papa. Okay, give the recap of Papa's life. You don't know Papa. Papa, please be often let people know you. That's Papa. Mama, join, join your husband. <laughs> Amen. You, you know, you, you know what happened? In the middle of the night, I just I just saw Facebook. The papa engaged his youngest daughter and they were dancing. They were only the two of them. Beautiful dancing for about three minutes. And I showed my wife. And I both said, oh, this is good. My wife said, look at what he wrote on top. It says, father, daughter, dance in the future. Put your hands together for it. No. No, I gave me joy. I started, I started, I started dancing in my heart. I mean, it's it had me a, if a lot of people who engage their children at that level of rapport, they like to be better. It was like they were competing. And I was looking for Mama Songa to begin to spread them. She didn't show up. Glory be to God. Amen. <laughs> you are the video, you are the cameraman, camera woman. Glory be to God. Amen. It's, too, it's not too difficult to spread it. All right. <laughs> For you to have a positive attitude, you must see yourself 
as a source of light, not a borrowed bit of darkness. Amen. You know, you and I, we agree that there are some people that we see and something lights up in our heart. matter how low you are feeling, you feel encouraged. And the same way you see, it doesn't matter how happy you feel, ah, oh my God. Mm. <laughs> you look somewhere like else. Don't be like one of those people. Amen. Do not do what? Be a source of light. Because that's who we are in Christ Jesus. Let people see you and let their problem melt. Amen. Even if it's temporary. Give people hope. Amen. Amen. Be mindful of your choice of words and language in describing, relating to events and people. There are some people that in your heart, in your mind, you call stupid. You don't have the courage or the guts to say it out. It's still the same thing. <laughs> in your mind, you look at the person and you dress him down, you dress her down, and you reject the person and you condemn the person in your mind. Because the best of attitudes come from the mind. It's the negative. So how do we help ourselves? We must be self-aware of our attitude. We must be self-aware of our attitude. We must speak to ourselves at all times. You must proactively encourage yourself to be kind, to be nice. It is true that many people can be horrible. It is true. But you know, there are some people outside the world who also see you as a potential horrible person. <laughs> Wives are potentially look at their mother in laws as the evil they must tolerate because of the love of their husband. It may be true, it may also not be true. But the mother also is looking at the wife of her son. <laughs> as a demon that she has to cope with. But if both parties are proactive, if both parties believe the best about each other, something will click. And that thing is called love. I practiced something before. I have pretended to love people in the past and I actually ended up loving them. Even in this church, from the valley to Los Angeles, there are people that I pretend to love them because I'm a pastor. And eventually I ended up loving them. Why? Because in pretending to love them, I began to see the positive aspects of their being. And that translated into authentic love. Now I was boasting, I think I was boasting to some group of people I was teaching when I was teaching some time ago, I said, I thank God that I'm no longer capable of hating people. Amen. Just like I'm no longer capable of watching horror movies where Dracula will sink his teeth in somebody's neck and blow. <laughs> I close my eyes and get up. I shut the television. I can't do it again. Yes, I still watch movies where people shoot. Or we are where terrorism will happen. You know, I like the excitement. You know, the boss is moving at the middle of the suddenly the bomb is detonated. But if I see the process of making the bomb, planting the bomb, uh, I'm not that I'm not that strong enough to follow the process. Just as I cannot stand to watch a movie where somebody should say knife to stop people continuously. It takes a level of demonic influence in your lives 
to enjoy and tolerate all those things. They were demonic influence in your life for you to look at a human being and hate the person. I want to pray a peculiar prayer for you that God will lift you above any ability for you to hate anybody in life. Amen. Yes, you can hate the person's behavior to things or issues because your own behavior is never 100% perfect in any case. One of the things that used to frustrate me when my children were growing up and there's language that's come to all of them. They said, Dad, why are you yelling? Why are you yelling? Ah. I said, I'm not yelling. He said, Dad, you are yelling. He said, I'm not, you are still yelling. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> Why are you yelling? And the more, the more I'm told I'm yelling, the more I get for I said, I am, I said, I, ah. <laughs> I yell more. But God has delivered me. The same God will deliver you. Yeah. People who yell, we yell a lot in Africa. Oh, we are yellers. <laughs> <laughs> they can export yelling to the entire world and be a rich nation, a rich continent. In the traffic, we yell. Even we yell with our horns, ba 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 ba, and then back it up with our body language. Many of us actually kill people. With a boy language. <laughs> you know, out of the abundance of your heart, it's not just that the mouth speaks it, the body <laughs> behaves. Amen. So be well aware of your attitude. So, what do we do, therefore? In situations that seem to overwhelm us, and I want you to say the following thing after me: We refocus. Say we refocus. We reframe, and we respond positively at all times. Naturally, because we're still in flesh to some extent, something stinks you. Your immediate reaction is to sting back. But if you hold back a moment for a while and you think just that pause will change your reaction. Just that pause, that, that, that patience will change your reaction. And that will make you the winner of the battle. When you win series of battles like that, you're going to end up winning the war. The war that gives you entrance to eternity. Amen. Three other things. Number, number, number eight, zero your energy on finding solutions to a problem rather than finding faults in the people involved. There will always be contentions. There will always be disagreements. But before you begin to find fault in the problem, in the people that are involved, first of all, find a solution. You know, guess what? If after you find a solution, it is easier then to dialogue and discuss how you got to that place. But if it is, I know you are the one that caused it. I was saying last week, I was saying week before, but you never listen. Uh, <laughs> The problem with linger that is necessary. Do not get rooted in the negative ABCD of life. ABCD of life. Do not get rooted in the ABCD of life. And what are ABCD of life? A stands for abstaining. Somebody say abstaining. abstaining. Be, ah, you drop. I'm not doing it again. No, no. And the problem that big eyes. No. <laughs> B stands for blaming. 
Say stand for complaining and complaining. And D stand for defensiveness. Now give me a simple example in the morning. If, if I ask Newton, Newton, who put this bank here? Instead of the answer, he said, Pastor, I put my bank under my chair. <laughs> That's what he said. Defensive. Because he assumed that whoever put that bank there has committed a sin. A pastor is going to deceive the person. I want to make sure that it's not the one. Pastor, I put my own under my bag. And I gave an example of the same new thing. <laughs> a few months back, they sang a very good hymn. And I said, Newton, that him. He said, Pastor, how will you amplify it to be song? <laughs> I just chilled. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Have the patience to understand the level of communication before you respond. Amen. And don't always be in an attitude of defensiveness. We know we are all sinners. But Christ has won the victory for us and once you repent and you resist you abstain from repeating the same act of sinfulness you are home amen, amen. has anybody not said today yes. come and go ahead and give God a clap